This video demonstrates some of the issues that Sears, Kenmore, and Whirlpool washers have had with mold. And this is my machine and my experience. I just want to give you a little bit background of what's happening here and uh, that it's a major problem that's actually facing class action lawsuits in both Canada, the USA, and perhaps other jurisdictions. Now I have to warn you a little bit that this uh, following video may be a bit graphic uh, because it's disgusting and some of the stuff that you're going to see is not going to look very pretty. Um, so just a word of caution, if you're disgusted by mold and slimy things, you may want to watch another video. Otherwise, please have a look and inform yourself because there's a major issue with Kenmore and Whirlpool washers, front-loading ones especially, uh, made around the 2001 era and on until about 2008 uh, because they had a poor design um, that caused the buildup of mold residue even despite following many of the manufacturers uh, recommendations it was just impossible pretty much to clean the unit properly and mold will build up and foul up your clothing and uh, really ruin your clothing and over a very short period of time render the machine useless uh, despite needing to repair it just a little bit of a background as far as this uh, is concerned and this is quoted from a lawyer website um, basically the complaints charge that certain front load automatic washers manufactured by Whirlpool and sold under the Whirlpool and Sears Kenmore brand names are defectively designed you can see in the video here that I'm um, looking at the rubber gasket that seals the front door and you know, after years of usage and constantly trying to clean it out, uh, inside that little lip where you can barely see what's going on, if you really pull it back, you'll notice that there's a lot of mold stain. And you know, it's been a frustrating exercise, even with keeping the door open between washes, cleaning it out constantly. It just does not go away. It says that because of the low volume of water used in these machines and low temperature of the water compared to the volume and temperature of water in traditional top load machines, they don't clean themselves adequately and as a result a biofilm or mass of microbes essentially form in the machine's drum where the washing occurs and creates mold which emits bad odors. Here I've uh, managed to get some tools and I've released the inside portion of the rubber gasket and expanded it out and as you can see here there's you're gonna see in a little bit later in a close-up video how much mold there really is and, and how it's almost impossible to remove so the issue is that it can damage uh, clothing because of the smells uh, often leaving a musky odor on clothing and you know despite fruitless and countless efforts of trying to clean this thing uh, it's almost impossible to get rid of it it gets inside of some of the um, the areas of the gasket that you can't access and reach properly and this is why it's been a major issue and really just almost impossible to fight even uh, repairing these machines and trying to change the gasket every few years uh, is pointless because it will foul up quite rapidly again the hoses inside the machine tend to to become reservoirs of mold as well and it's just a poor and bad design and perhaps also the material itself of the gasket uh, is uh, of an inferior type of rubber that allows mold to penetrate. It may not have certain anti-mold um, uh, compounds in it. So here I'm trying to remove the outer s part of the seal and um, there's basically a release at the bottom, another spring and a coil. There's the spring, got my finger on it and there's the metal and it very rapidly releases and there it is and the whole rubber gasket is essentially still attached to the machine by the hose that hose is what delivers water in uh, to the machine and you can uh, usually you can separate that hose from the gasket you can uh, replace the gasket and then try to put it back but as I mentioned before uh, you know you get mold inside also the soap dispenser area because uh, it, it doesn't really clean that area either over time you can see uh, you know there'll be various deposits in many places now you can see in the video here um, some of the again mold deposits that are found in the outlet hose um, that build up they're not being flushed out at sufficient quantities 
and that mold will continue to exit the unit and build up as well in the exhaust uh, tube and uh, you can see some of the mold growth that retains itself in the tube. As well mold will build up within the inside of the washer uh, soap dispenser because of the way that it's it just fouls up the entire unit and once it forms inside the hoses and the tubing it basically is impossible to get rid of because it, it even if you clean and change the gasket every once in a while the door seal every once in a while the tubing it, there's still going to be an issue with mold as it deposits itself in various places and the design of the machine not allowing high temperature using very minimal water and low pressures uh, and not really having a cleaning cycle built into it at all um, will continue to form mold at a rapid rate. Uh, but in the main concern I believe is that people bought these machines, uh, the front loaders, thinking that they would be more efficient, that they would be easier to get in and out of, uh, to uh, r take your clothing, remove it and so on. Uh, but uh, they actually were not designed well enough to handle that kind of usage. At least the door seals were not and you can see here you know relatively brand new unit you know built in 2008 it's now 2015 seven years really is not a long time for you know this higher end washer to um, you know to fail in this way and th this mold issue uh, just really became apparent to me recently uh, but it was obviously a problem that was occurring in the machine for some time and people will have various uh, times until they notice it. We live in a very dry environment and so we typically do not see this kind of mold at all so uh, it took longer but I believe people who have mentioned they had the machines in southern climates that are more humid would have the mold buildup occur within only a few years. Unfortunately the where the water comes out of the hose and exits the, uh, the door seal right in there there's a large amount of mold that builds up as well and when this is inside of the machine it's almost impossible to actually clean it you really can't maintain the seal at all you know there's little tiny crevices mold builds up it gets inside there and once it forms it's impossible to remove no matter how much bleach you use in the machine and even then because of the the type of conditions that the machine uh, that exist in this type of machine the mold will regrow so I just wanted to inform everyone of this problem uh, get more people aware that ha may have these types of machines and show an example of how a machine can look like once it's been rendered useless by the mold problem and what you should really be looking for in your own machines at home if you have not noticed anything obvious uh, but you're sort of getting a musty or uh, mi mildewy smell on your clothing and not so fresh anymore you should really be investigating the seal of your door carefully and all the components inside your machine so if you found this video useful thank you I uh, hope you enjoyed it and please give it a thumbs up